The itsy bitsy doctor crawled up the crystal spout? I don't know, the time spout. Sure, there's a spout probably somewhere in the TARDIS at this point. Uh, we're talking about the episode of Doctor Who, Arachnids in the UK. We're going to talk about giant spiders, this weird uh, Mr. Big is on Doctor Who as a Trump analogy. Uh, there's uh, so much to dissect, and we're going to talk about the TARDIS team. All that and more on tonight's Doctor Who After Show. of TV Talk. Now, let the buzz begin. I don't even know what to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Doctor Who. It's a Doctor Who with a rap song. Uh... Hashtag problem. Oh my god, if you're not watching us on YouTube and you're listening to this, feel free to keep listening, but then go watch the YouTube video so you can see Dave get, in his, li get his liquid feet on. A little twerk. Mm -hmm. a little baby it was twerk. beautiful, Dave. Thank you. It was beautiful. Uh, thank, you. thank you guys so much for joining us here on After Buzz TV's <laughs> Doctor Who After Show. Um, I'd also like to take us a moment to apologize for uh, the ridiculous cold open that we just did. <laughs> yeah. in, which I, in which I got a, a face palm out of Dave and I consider that a success. I just feel yes. like there should be more spout talk and uh, I like how many times you mentioned the word spout. Yeah. Well, I'm going to spout off oh, who's God. on the panel tonight. Oh, man. Uh, I am Zach Wilson. I've got the whole panel's here we are today. Again. Adrian Snow. Hello, everyone. I'm Adrian Snow. Zia Anderson. Hi guys, Zia here. And Dave Child. I am Dave Child. Uh. <laughs> guys, uh, I'm so excited to jump in. All right, let's get this wrap out of here. Kill it, Steve. Kill it. Okay, great. I love it. All right. Yeah. Uh, we, we, all the spiders are now coming into the studio. Right, We're right, right. Them Too all many in. spiders. So I think we got to turn off the music. Now, yeah. Before they love we them beats. And before everyone who has like any kind of minor arachnophobia who might have like just Dude. watched this episode and be like I can't I can't look at the screen anymore um Ooh. it just made me think of Ron Weasley I was like oh this is his nightmare <laughs> yeah. yeah um first reactions what did you guys think of arachnids in the UK I really liked it I liked it a lot I liked uh character development I liked the sound design I liked the cinematography I was like oh I like almost everything about this episode um and I really hate spiders, so I won't ever probably watch it again. But I appreciate that I like the episode so much, but the spiders are too real. There were things about it I liked and some things that I didn't like so much. It wasn't overall my favorite episode. Mm -hmm. I liked the spiders, and I liked um, some of the character development as well. But there were some other things in there that I was like, eh, this is not for me. Yeah, yeah. I really liked diving into Yaz and, and finding out more about her and her family. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was good. It's, it is really interesting to see... They're doing the full round of Doctor Who like type of shows, yeah. And it was nice to get like this is the scary, yeah, like, uh, the type thriller. Of Doctor well, was it, the we, thriller, the base under siege. Like yeah. we hadn't gotten a base under siege yet, right? Is that, which is yeah. that's like the big classic, like mm -hmm. Doctor Who always does. Yeah, base on like and that's what they they call it in like the, the Doctor Who textbooks is right. base under siege. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to get a scary one right in like you know Halloween week. Yeah, so it's a yeah. nice little Sad. Halloween nod without being like too. Overindulgent without doing <laughs> Doctor Who Halloween special. special. Yeah. That's what we move. We move off of Christmas episodes to ski skeletons dancing around. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily be angry about that. To be I, yeah, I actually yeah. kind of love that idea. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought this was a good episode. It was it was solid all around. Like I, I had no like complaints like about this episode. I think the only thing I'm missing so far this season is like I want more. And I know that they're not really going to do this this season. I want more arc building like i want more mm -hmm. big, big universe stuff but mm -hmm. like that's that's minor that's mm -hmm. like something that we can get at any point as long yeah. like as long as we get some of it at some mm. point but like i don't i didn't need in this episode and as far as a standalone goes this was a solid one it had yeah. i thought it had enough 
like just the right amount of like political analogies and mm-hmm. stuff in there, but it mm-hmm. never felt super heavy handed. Yeah, to it was the point, like, because that can happen sometimes with any science fiction, any show, and Doctor Who is guilty of it plenty mm-hmm. times, where the what they're trying to like have an, have like the reference be is like hitting you over the head with it, and this felt like enough separated from what it was trying to say. While also just giving us a good, like, science fiction-y little, like, villain monster character. There was one aspect about this uh, episode, though, that kind of, like, it tested my limits of empathy. Because they kept talking about, they kept talking about, oh, we gotta, like, not shoot the spiders. And I kept thinking, like, just shoot Shoot the spiders. Okay. Like just, I see what you mean. You know, like, at that point, when uh, the spider was suffocating, I had that moment of like, well, you know, I never thought I'd be in a position where I feel empathy for a spider. That was nice. But I, <laughs> I was like, I care. I'm like, oh, yeah. Because I think that, that kind of speaks to, like, you don't have to just annihilate something just because it's inconveniencing you. And, and the spiders weren't actually a villain. They were just... The villain was Chris Noff. Like. Yeah, but the thing is, so. like, it doesn't end with them finding a happy land for the spiders to live yeah. at the end. It ends with them still killing all the spiders. Yeah. So right. it's kind of, it was an odd twist of an ending. Like, I love when the when the doctor is super empathetic and is even more empathetic than me or a normal human mm-hmm. and is caring for the the care of, of even sp- horrible-looking spiders. Yeah. I love that idea. I kind of wish it didn't end with them all dying in that sense, yeah. or one, or a, a spider suffocating, and then the bad guy comes in and shoots the the mom spider, and it is a mercy killing. I kind of agree. So it's a bit of a uh, mixed message. There. I think it would have been a mercy killing if he had had a different intention. It, it was yeah. his intent. Yeah. yeah, his That's, intent wasn't for that. That was the difference. Is I felt like the like the creature was dying, and like yeah, I Dave, I see what you're saying. Like there is yeah. a certain sense of like if it. If, if he had been using any other method, would the doctor have had been so opposed to it? Because the fact is, this creature was going to slowly suffocate to death versus yeah. a more or less instant death via uh, Jack Robertson's like plan, I just, which is yeah. just to shoot it. And like he doesn't, he is not redeemed because he did not the intended intention. to be a mercy killing, but. As far as like, it's one of those the, one of those like weird philosophy things. It's like, what is the is it the consequence? Is it the intention of the action that makes? I've been watching a lot of good places. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, the thing <laughs> the thing is, it's like, yeah, he's a dick, and that's why it's like feels like it's such a bad move to kill her. But they could have put the gun in anyone else's hands and had a, like a nice speech about mm-hmm. how it's like. We gotta, uh, we gotta make sure she dies with like as quick as possible. That would have and it would have felt fine. Does like, it matter? Do, do you guys odd. think it matters to the doctor that? And we're like jumping right into like the big part of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, do you think it matters to the doctor that this was not a necessarily intelligent creature? Like the doctor talks to the spider like she would talk to any other alien creature, Mm -hmm. but the spider never, they never give us any sense in this episode that these are anything other than just spiders that got really big. I think it, it goes against the message of Doctor Who, of the doctor, to have any, to have the doctor or the doctor's companions use a gun to take something's life. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing is with Doctor Who is about being um, honoring the life of anything. So it, even if it's not an intellectual being, this, that's just not how the Doctor rolls. The, the Doctor is about saving life forms. You know what I mean? So I get why they didn't do it. At the same time, I'm also the same person who had to kill a mouse because the mouse is suffering. So and I stomped on a box on its head. So wow, we're getting you know, dark. <laughs> Sometimes you do what you gotta do because you want to you want a mercy kill, and you well, know I definitely. But my intention was different from right. Well, but Robertson. what's worse, worse to sit and watch something suffer as it dies yeah. when you could do something yeah. to help it? And we so could get into that, and we could yeah. get into the euthanasia <laughs> debate for a long <laughs> time. I don't think we need to go as deep down well, that no, rabbit yeah. hole on the Doctor Who after show. But it is, but it, but I like that Doctor Who at least broached that topic. Yeah. It didn't necessarily. I don't think it needed to it, offer a definitive answer on it. Yeah. it didn't. That's the thing. I didn't need them to really bring it up, but it sort of like mentioned it. Like mm-hmm. I just felt that, like, like they kind of. 
My my complaint is that the message was brought up but not really addressed. Yeah, I agree. And I feel Fair like enough. they because they did say like, oh, we can learn it all here, and then they said it's so it's a um, it's a civil uh, safe death for all of the spiders. And that was they could have done something where the spiders could have lived happily ever after. It's yeah. you know they, they could have they didn't address it. They kind of. They could have mourned the spiders. The political over the spider. Yeah, and that's where the ending to me fell flat. That was one of the things I didn't like Mm -hmm. was that ending, and it just kind of fell flat, and it didn't feel like it it really tied anything up either. It was exactly, yes. I just want to say, though, uh, because I said I'd bring it up, uh, it definitely felt like Arachnophobia, the 1990 Frank Marshall classic with John Goodman, Julian Sands, (laughs) and Jeff Daniels. I want to post that picture up there. If you're uh, well, on YouTube. Good, more spiders. Right? <laughs> but these spiders aren't trying to, you know, they aren't intentionally doing harm. <laughs> like, right. They're just spiders. being spiders. But those suckers, go see that movie, y'all. It's so bad. Um, but <laughs> at least as as monsters, I thought the spiders were good. They oh, were yeah. good, creepy. Yes. They, they were, were definitely like, the yes. scariest. Visually very well designed. Mm-hmm. Um I, and like, I mean, the setup for how they got big is just like this is classic, mm-hmm. like comic book reverse. Like they fell in the yeah. ooze. They <laughs> fell in the radioactive waste that mm-hmm. we threw in this mine, mm-hmm. and yeah. now we got giant monsters eating people. They were basically Bebop and Rocksteady. That they, <laughs> they fell in the ooze, and then they came out as mutants. Except they didn't get to like talk you know, like nah. like four year olds, and they don't have they... cool. Like mohawks. Yeah, they don't have they, they don't have nineties torn coats. Yeah, they yeah. still run around in. <laughs> it would have been cool to see some teenage mutant ninja spiders. I think standing uh-huh. up on two legs fighting. <laughs> oh no! Oh been man, terrifying. they just have a flurry <laughs> of <laughs> oh, six. They have six arms, and only two legs. It's like, <laughs> what if they give them to the subterranean lizard people, and then all of a sudden they're just riding these spiders that around? That would be awesome. Time, oh. so, and that's the happily ever after. Is the yeah. the Vostra oh, like rides up from this hotel on like spider that. back. Ugh. Somebody please fan art it. <laughs> fan art it now. And Strax gets to ride one too. Oh, Great. Yes. Jenny oh, is riding shotgun uh, like with Madame Vostra. There you go. Strax is on a slightly smaller spider. <laughs> yes. And he Perfect. said, well, if we couldn't kill it, I guess I could ride it. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Oh my god, I want uh. it. Somebody please draw it and send it to us. <laughs> uh, um, so before we get deeper into this episode, because I want to talk about Jack Robertson, mm-hmm. uh, our mm-hmm. like Elon Musk Trump mm-hmm. mashup character. Is he, is he an Elon Musk? He's more like, just Elon Trump. Yeah. He's like he's got Trump. Trump. He's basically Trump, except he lives in the same world as Trump, yeah. which was interesting because yeah. they bring up the idea that Trump is president and that he's planning on running against Trump, even though he's exactly the same person which i think is i thought was an interesting move because i think it shows that we're not just talking there's more people like trump out there so it's it's kind of a they could even be on the opposite side of of the fight yeah Mm -hmm. so i think that's part of why i bring elon musk into it there's like a whole they they do a ton of analogies with him but it just Mm -hmm. that that was when they first introduced him i was like that is that who we're going with for this? I mean, it's pretty pretty clearly a, a strong dig at Trump. I mean, mm-hmm. they made him a germaphobe. He fired someone within the first two minutes of him being on screen. Mm-hmm. His he owns skin a bunch had of... sort of a odd uh, whole... color to it. Yeah. Yeah. He has gold plated hotels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he straight up says hotels. Fire and Fury, which is a book, as well as a direct quote uh, from. Oh boy! All right, fair so, enough. Like, they was like, "This is about Trump." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're that yeah. bloke. Yeah. As, as but yeah. this is like, like 2011 Trump, where if you he saw him, you'd be like, "Oh, huh, Trump." Yeah. <sighs> yeah, he's not president yet, so yeah. it's like, "Oh, you're delightfully." Or wins. not 2011, 2015. <laughs> but now no, he, no, he, this guy's talking about running. Uh, yeah. But we, we're we're gonna yeah. get deeper into all of that, and mm-hmm. we're gonna talk about like we're gonna talk with all of the companions and the doctor, or, or like weekly ch- weekly check in on like how what are you thinking of the the, the new doctor? Mm-hmm. Um, but first, a quick message uh, about AfterBuzz TV yes. that Zia is gonna give us. AfterBuzzers, our network produces after shows for nearly all of your favorite TV shows, from dramas, reality TV, sci fi, and more. There is no network that works harder to serve television fans. But we need your help. We're asking that you please subscribe to one 
or more of our YouTube channels. <laughs> By subscribing to our channel, YouTube will suggest content that is tailor-made for you and you'll help, help AfterBuzz continue to grow. And if you're worried about pesky notifications, don't be, because they're optional. You can turn them off. It's amazing. Um, so hit that subscribe button now for this channel and check out our other AfterBuzz YouTube channels as well. Let us know you did so in the chat and we will, or in the comments, and we'll thank you on air. For now, thank you for being the best fans and for helping us be the ESPN of TV talk. And thank you, Dave, for helping me with your That was the, the weirdest, yeah. lazy sign language. <laughs> Again. <laughs> like, like, oh, Dave me. Child mm -hmm. justifying why they put us on camera. <laughs> right? I'm just giving the people who watch us something a little extra. Right? <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's dive in to uh more about the, this episode and like uh, i want to talk about uh i want to talk about the doctor mm -hmm. this yeah. is she's in charge <laughs> i is like that I, we've seen that moment in trailers like, and stuff yeah. up to now but it was i liked where it fell and he's like who show. says that and they're like us oh, like, everyone in the room's yeah. like we do i love it back off yeah. cps's mom is like who is she? Yeah. Who are you what people? This? I like that she thinks that she's seeing yeah, like that her and Yaz are seeing each other. Nice. And she's like, no, mom. I like that because I think we even talked about that last season. I was like, if they do allude to the doctor in any way being like in a relationship with someone, I hope that they still go with a woman. And so I was, it was nice to kind of see that. I, not that they're going to be in a relationship, I but just like the... Are. The even alluding to it or making the joke of like, are you two dating? Uh, which poor Yaz, everyone thinks she's dating somebody. I, I, think I guess too. that's just but what I thought it was adorable. Does. The right, mom yeah. was like, just the mom's like a little bit of like not mad and not like a, that like weird angry no, mom way, but like she was like disappointed. She's like, oh, are you and Yaz? Yeah, <laughs> she's like I just want someone for my daughter. It's just I know. That's for, how, yeah. yeah, that's how. I love how excited the family was. Yeah, yeah just to have any sort of friends. Like cute, the friends yeah. are here. Mm -hmm. It's great. I, I, I also. Love, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say I love the sister hitting on Ryan too. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, as a sister being uh, like, so Sonya? you guys aren't together. Yes, mm -hmm. that was really funny. Yeah, I love the doctor's reaction when the mom's like, "Are you two seeing each other?" I don't know. I think I don't think so. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does that even mean? Like I don't know what we're talking about. I'm starting to feel like this doctor has like ADHD a little bit mm -hmm. like not in like a bad way as somebody with ADHD I don't say it in a bad way mm. but like it's it just like that's like sort of the behavior model that I'm seeing mm -hmm. for this character right. it's like cause she's all like if she's even more all over the place than other mm -hmm. versions of the doctor like the doctor goes on rants all the time mm -hmm. but this doctor is just like she mentions I, like she's like maybe I'm nervous or socially awkward. Like she's like a friendly Sherlock. Like the, yeah. the, the things that oh, a lot of people right. care about, uh, she does not you know really think about as much. So she's like, oh, are we dating? Is that something? Or even just understanding pop culture, but not like being able to hit it like on Ed the nose. Sharon, they're like, are you a Sharon? Everyone's talking about it, Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> and like knowing a just enough. Exactly. <laughs> Also, I love that she's fascinated with Ed Sheeran because one of the running things about the doctor I like is uh, he or she always wants to be a ginger. Yeah. <laughs> and is always yes. upset about that. Yeah. So I'm still just, waiting on that like, line that for, yes. for Jody. Um, I like I, I like little details from this one that were fun. Like, I was like, I've never had a flat. I, my, my, my nerd brain went into just like, but what about that one episode uh, with. Um, Oh uh, yeah, with uh, when, when, James when, he, when Matt Smith moved in, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, he was James Corden. Well, I mean, I guess it wasn't his flat at the time. Yeah, uh, it wasn't still. the doctor's flat, but I was he still like, a room. he rented a room. Yeah. He had a flat yeah. for like a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. I think the doctor just forgot about that moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like, oh yeah, I guess I did. Never oh, like forget it. about Stormageddon. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> one day, one day they will give me adult Stormageddon. <laughs> Zia, you don't know this. You didn't hear <laughs> my rants and my begging for them to make Storm again in the next companion. I still want it, Chibnall. You can do what Moffat <laughs> never did. Give me Storm again. Grown up Alfie. Cool. On, anyway, on note, moving on. So, um, <laughs> I'm glad you did mention you have ADHD. <laughs> I, I like that the rant, of though. This. Now I know. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, we, we talked a little bit about uh, how... Uh, it was nice seeing like uh, like Ryan and like the sisters interaction and mm -hmm. and yeah this whole family. Mm -hmm. um, do do you think that uh, they're gonna? I guess they're not gonna notice that. Yeah, as I even as I ask that question, that yes is gone. No, because uh, this doctor is uh, very good at getting people back within the hour. 
Whereas like Matt Smith's doctor, well, all over the place. Any, kind of any of them. Lot. Record yeah. of one time too. I think this is. I'm gonna give it to her okay. because I've never seen it done before. <laughs> She's more on time. Yes. It's happened once. Right. Yeah. One time. I've more. Never seen the doctor get anyone back on time. Very I think true. he got. When, like I think he got Amy back for the wedding. Like true. Like mm, that. Yeah. Like he was bad when he was kept trying to come back just him. But yeah. like right. Amy didn't like miss her wedding. Yeah, I guess she Maybe. did try to sleep with that's, him on her wedding night. But that's neither here nor yeah, there. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that said, the doctor's record not good. <laughs> yeah, not, not good, good. <laughs> for someone with a time machine. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot of. Oh, another moment that I really like is when they're flying in the time machine in in TARDIS in the TARDIS, and we get to kind of see what this season's like, kind of flying through the, space uh, and time looks not like. The vor- yeah, yeah, the yeah. vortex. Oh, not the vortex. yeah, the, vortex. It, I think vortex. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was interesting. Yeah. It was a different and there look. A whole mm-hmm. bunch of different Little pockets. Ones as they, like because yeah. uh, what it looks like is that they're actually going through black holes, which yeah. is. The theory is that the way to do time travel is to go through black holes. So right. Yeah. Or That's like cool. wormholes, like those path, mm-hmm. those pathways. That black like, holes are wormholes. It's and... cool. It's something that we don't usually do. We just like yeah. click there. You see them spinning yeah. and there's like, oh, you God. know, hippy dippy lights around them. <laughs> like around the TARDIS. <laughs> By the way, Rory uh, Fansler says he got Amy back in time a lot during that episode where she kept pretending uh, she wasn't traveling to Rory. Okay, and then actually okay. he did get uh, what's her face, Claire, Clara, back um, when she was going on all those dates with Pink. With yeah, yeah. right. So I'll give it to you. It's not that the Doctor never gets people back in time. It's just that overall the track record's <laughs> not perfect. Yeah. Um, Things get in the way. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> what do you guys think about like how like uh, so I want to talk about like Ryan and. Uh, Grant. Mm-hmm. Grant. 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 Graham. 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 Grace. Grant. Like, oh, we'll, we'll talk about Graham and Grace. Mm-hmm. That um, was that was really sad, uh, heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's a little bit of like a story that they're starting to build, like this bigger yeah. like backstory with, with the, the companions. Like, yeah, that's like I say I want some like overarching stuff, and like they're they're, they're doing some stuff and with the companions. Even doing it with um, uh, the Doctor, they dropped that little tidbit about the Doctor having sisters. And have that it. felt like like doctor nonsense to me. But but there's also that thing about the the what something child. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. timeless child. Timeless, timeless child. child. So I think there's there's just little hints that you know might lead to something. But with yeah. Ryan, and, family is like yeah, is a reoccurring a theme. theme in this. Oh, that's what I was also gonna say. So the, a big theme this year is family as well mm-hmm. as uh, toxic masculinity. <laughs> like uh, in terms of, mm. and, not, and not in terms of like all men are bad, but addressing that this particular behavior is bad. Uh, you see it Wait, in, in this episode. You, well, yeah, you see it with uh, the Robert the Robertson character, Chris Mills character. You see it with uh, even in Rosa, the uh, BFG GFB character, Crosco. He's also kind of that toxic toxicness and toxic. Toxic masculinity, and then you see it with the uh, original aliens from the first episode. Right. It's just like it's really subtle, and this was like probably the episode where it was most on the nose. But just in terms of how that idea of uh, one for male, power too, sh- yeah. But and I'm sure they're gonna blow it up and see. We'll see it in different ways, but like that male type of. But they're also balancing it off with like, they're also balancing it off with with Ryan and Graham. Exactly, Mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's about hating men. It's actually addressing what people are saying toxic masculinity is. It's not Mm -hmm. about men being bad. It's about this trait that through society has, has kind of like allowed and ignored or enforced being a problem. But they also, by having Graham and Ryan there saying it's not something that we think is like overall a men problem it's something that negatively affects everyone that and is in it it's that it's that over aggressive like i'm right you're wrong yeah. like mm-hmm. just listen to me and forcing that opinion on people like the uh, like the way that jack fascism really too 
Basically, yeah. it's I basically mean, that's fascism. What it is. And every single because when we're when you're looking at toxic masculinity, it's just a it's new term fascism. for fascism. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And <laughs> it's it's almost like it's interesting that we've moved away from the term fascism because the term fascism sounds more gender neutral, weirdly. Mm. But yeah, it's it's the same exact thing. Mm. And you have the reoccurring like uh, teeth aliens in the beginning. And then, and yeah, every single one of these characters, even the the future racist, was yeah. was that, and the this kind of new Trumpian is this kind of. It's just a really it. subtle thing that I noticed that I was like, I wonder if he's if if he's kind of putting that in there because we did talk about how the doctor is going to encounter people now that mm -hmm. uh, the doctor is a woman, and so it's just something I picked up on. We saw it a little bit. I was like, uh, from a couple episodes ago, we didn't quite have this moment, and I feel like it's still coming. But I was expecting a moment where everyone, where someone would address Graham or someone would address someone yeah. else before they address the doctor mm -hmm. and not realizing the power lies with the doctor. We saw a little bit of it in this episode yeah. Yeah. when he comes in and says, like, who's, why is she in charge? Mm -hmm. So it's, it is a little bit of an odd towards that. Yeah, a little I, bit. How I, I was just say, however, they have done that a lot in the past with mm -hmm. the doctor assuming, you know, his lead role and everybody kind of being like, wait, why do you get to be in charge? And the doctor being like, because I'm the doctor. Mm -hmm. right. So they're also staying true to that mm -hmm. as well because it's kind of been a trend. Mm -hmm. But, but you, do, you don't usually see people fight back as much mm -hmm. like we did with, with Jack here. Like, it's, he, like, his, rea his reaction was very, like, why her? Mm -hmm. it, it felt like it pointed that way. And, like, the show was clearly doing that on purpose, that they had that moment mm -hmm. of, like, everyone, all of our friends mm -hmm. to be, like, because she's the best. Like, what? Are, why would you even ask that? There's also, uh, to go back to what her character is developing into, uh, I see in her... Um, something that's she's a lot more she treats everyone more as equals than previous doctors mm. I think previous mm -hmm. doctors mm. really talked down to people and was like I'm the leader I'm the teacher I'm gonna be the person in charge here mm -hmm. and she's more of uh, leading a group and talking to the group and talking as a fam and I think there's a reason why this episode ends with all of them holding down the TARDIS yeah. uh, the lever and pulling it because mm -hmm. she sees everyone as an equal and she's more about working as a team mm -hmm. than really kind of um than, than telling people what they need to do, yeah. which is, I think it is nodding towards like tox, toxicity and fascism that's and getting a, away from it. Dave, that's a great point. Like that, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Like mm -hmm. that's this, that is going to be the big difference between this season and past seasons. Is mm -hmm. The doctor and the companion, and I think that's why they sort of straight away, Chip will talk about them as companions mm -hmm. because they're not just like a companion. A companion sort of implies like a tag along. No, they're team like, TARDIS. They, they're yeah. team TARDIS. They're friends. Friends, they, yeah. they are obviously they're not fam. <laughs> fam. That doesn't sound right. No. They're not naturally <laughs> equals, but Adrian, it's also what you said, like mm. about the theme being family. I think those two thoughts tie perfectly together. Yeah. Like that, I like that idea that the doctor is building a family, and like we open with the doctor so sad. She's like. I don't want to say like she's clearly like I don't want to say goodbye, but like yeah. I get that yeah I got you yeah. home like it's that was different for the doctor, which I liked mm -hmm. because I think normally we've seen the doctor. I remember seeing the doctor more like listen, you have to go, you have to go. I have to be alone. I have to be alone well, and I have to be sad. Tenant's doctor <laughs> this is didn't a bit new. That's true. Not always do that. He occasionally did that, but like when he wanted uh, Donna Noble to be his companion. He asked. Uh, he asked. Yeah. And he was true. like really vulnerable about it. So uh, I think there's always going to be, um, and I, th I think this is okay that the doctor would be different um, when being betrayed by a woman mm -hmm. in, in more ways than one. That there is going to be um, sensitivity. There's to her. sensitivity that yeah. comes with the doctor. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that as a part of being a woman or as a part of being a man. It's just that. Society-wise, women can express that sensitivity more. Well, they're expected to, and that's actually well. The, that's when it gets bad. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, and, and also good because it's it allows them to be sensitive because yeah. there's the bad side of we're getting into deep stuff here. But the bad side of patriarchy, even for guys, is oh, that yeah. guys so aren't supposed emotional. to be sensitive. They have to bottle it up, and when they bottle it up, that's where the real bad stuff ends up exploding out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. that's a big problem. And so having having a doctor be more sensitive, even if a future doctor is going to be a male, I think we have one person in the chat say, so being a woman has changed the doctor for the better. And I think that's true because it shows, it gives 
a more of a spectrum to how how this one character is able to express themselves and yeah. and uh, see the world. And so. that's something that I think like it, we could all benefit from to a certain extent. Like yeah. you you want to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes, yeah. and it, like we we can't all do that like where we can just like step into a different gender and then understand it yeah. from that perspective but mm-hmm. try like try to like see things from that perspective and don't like be closed off to others experiences and how th- they could be different from you or how they could be the same yeah. even if the two people are vastly different and it shows that the, the doctor is still the same person as a woman or as a man but there's going to be i think there's the allowance when the doctor is in a woman's form of having that kind of vulnerability or sensitivity from jump that isn't necessarily there mm-hmm. uh, when the doctor is in a male form. And they even kind of alluded to that even in Moffat when the pre- previous Time Lord was like, oh my God, with the men it's just so much ego. But you have to think about how that's also encouraged by society. Um, anyways... Ryan's father. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, I wanted to piggyback off of this 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 thing to transition because we were while we're talking about this idea of like toxic masculinity mm-hmm. and, sh- and being able to show and deal with your emotions. Yeah. I think it's a great yeah. place to talk about Graham and what oh, he's yeah. dealing with because I thought that the way that they expressed his the way he's dealing with his grief like his loss was really beautiful. It was subtle. It wasn't like constantly there throughout the episode, but it was peppered in just enough where it's like clearly he is dealing with it mm-hmm. the entire time. Like he's he's seeing her, not literally. He's not literally like having no. visions. I mean, of, we see that as the audience. Yes, but, yeah. but like but that I but I think it's more of a manifest it's a visual representation of that thing that I think a lot of people do normally where they they have a conversation with the person that that can't be there, mm-hmm. whether that's in like whether that's an angry conversation or in this case just like a very solemn one. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's something that people do, and I thought it was portrayed really well. And it's him dealing with it, and with the way he talks about it at the end, like grief takes time, yeah. and it yeah. does. And this mm-hmm. is a guy who's like, you know, well, grief can take time. But I can step out of time for a little while. It doesn't have to affect my life here. Yeah. I can step out, deal with it, and come back, and I can do some stuff I've never done before in the process. Yeah. Now, whether going on crazy, life-threatening adventures mm-hmm. is the healthiest way to deal with your grief, I debatable. Mean, but I, it's just nice to see grief on Doctor Who. You don't yeah. actually... Yeah. yeah. A lot of times, I think they even talked about this one time, where it's about the doctor goes and the doctor doesn't see what... what you know, he she does to the companions once he's gone. Like they, I think they mentioned mm-hmm. that. I think maybe Martha might have said that to him at one point mm-hmm. when she comes back later. Um, and so it was nice to see them have a. This is the, this is me finally saying okay. It was fine that Grace died in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, I well, did not like it. Well, because they're using it. Because they're, they're using actually it. using yeah. it to an effective way to tell a, a story about healing and vulnerability yeah and and grief is something that that is always it's not it's never forgotten it's always just people have, are looking at grief now uh, nowadays where it's not something that's erased by time it's just more life is built around it mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's still there but there's more life so it gets smaller because your life gets bigger mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's what they're leaning towards and i really appreciate that because there's I think you know a lot of people have experienced a lot of grief in their lives, and as someone who has, and it's it is something that you need to not just dwell in the life that you had, and being in that house and actually not doing anything except mm-hmm. living every day when you have the chance to go out and explore the galaxy. Mm-hmm. It is a healthy process because you're expanding your life, you're making it bigger, and she's always still going to be there, and they're still like leaning towards that, which is it's a great discussion to have. And yeah. I also really like that he's starting to build more of a connection with Ryan. And that's really his connection to Grace because that's Grace's grandson. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so they can start to, he can start to have, well, not start to have, but he will have a piece of Grace with Ryan. And I think it'll be good for both of them to kind of have each other, especially throughout all of this. Yeah. yeah. And- so, so Zia, off of that, I want to know, what do you think about this letter from Ryan's dad? Uh, it was, I feel like it was insulting to Ryan, Mm -hmm. and I feel like it was just insulting in general for him to be like, well, I'm your proper family, Mm. but it sounds like they obviously, or it sounds like they didn't have a very healthy relationship, which 
just to me, blood doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. It's 100% how you treat the people that you care about. It's, and family doesn't necessarily have to be... No, go ahead. No, go ahead. It doesn't Please necessarily finish. have to be... Um, have to be people that you are related to. It's the people that care for you and are there for you. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we don't know too much about his father yet, mm-hmm. but just the fact that he wrote him a letter a letter, and Ryan didn't want to open it is kind of telling. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm, it'll be interesting to see when Ryan's father is, is properly huh, introduced. <laughs> um, just because that's a, that's a whole interesting dynamic they're playing with or, or talking about uh, in terms of black sons and black fathers yeah. and I don't know too much about I, I would assume the dynamic isn't too different you know in the UK as it is here but uh, an absentee father or what that means or what's the actual story there is he really an absentee father like what really went down and so I mean clearly it's now but um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's playing off it's a, a possible little, stereotype that you have to like it's playing off enter. a possible stereotype but I mean even with my own brother and my father, like just my dad's mm-hmm. not absentee, but it's a complicated relationship just by the very act of them being black right. men, <laughs> you know? So it's, I'm curious to see how they're going to play with that and, and also how they're going to develop that alongside uh, Ryan having a relationship with Graham. One thing that's nice that we're seeing already, they did a, they're doing a great job with building every character and finding out more about each character in every single episode. Mm-hmm. And we've already seen this arc with Ryan where in the first episode he would only refer to Graham as his Mm step-grandfather and would never refer to him as his grandfather and Mm -hmm. step, step, step. Mm -hmm. And now that he's saying you're my, I hate that he said you're not my proper family, Mm -hmm. that's already a huge Mm -hmm. growth for Ryan. And it's, it's nice to see that progress even further. And they're also progressing like a yes, Ryan thing by, by pointing at it a bit more. Don't do it. I, I like the I, like the, I, I kind of ship it. I gotta be it's honest. It's not because like, I don't ship it. It's just because don't do it. Like why not? I, because I I always want to test people to just let a man and a woman on a show just be friends. Yes, but be, but the fact that they're not listen. It's it's TV. <laughs> it's TV, and they have to they have to put some uh-huh. sort of ship somewhere, and but they're they steering away. They're steering it away. <laughs> They're steering it away from the doctor, and that's what I like. I get it. I, I like focusing on these two characters that they're building a relationship with, mm-hmm. and I think that's okay as far as I like the other I get it, one. but the, I, I think I even said this last season. The, the test I wanted to see was them to just have a platonic love between a straight man and a straight woman on Doctor Who with a female doctor. And so they're like, it's not the doctor, but it's still something where I'm like, just... I don't know. It can but it's happen. still there because the doctor is still going to have a platonic love with all of this family. And it is. That's and true. And you're going to have that familial love with Graham and Ryan. I'm just saying I don't Ryan. want any romance. Well, and I, get, and I get that. <laughs> you're a Grinch. And, I, and, and here's the thing. I, I totally understand that because yeah. like, I've, I've said that on other shows where it's like we can just have two people who just like each other and mm-hmm. want to spend time together. Mm-hmm. It is rare that you see a truly platonic mm-hmm. relationship. I've been like developing this like formula, not really, but like I if I want to. <laughs> you get like your a, your room has all these like It's a sitcom formula that's like the longer two character a, a show goes on, the more like every variable of a relationship will happen in some form. Mm-hmm. Like whether you, it's in a dream like Think about like how I met your mother and like whether it's in a dream or anything like all those characters wind up doing something together before mm-hmm. you get to season 10. Um, but I I know I understand <laughs> that desire for like platonic. Yeah. But that said, I totally ship it. Um, um, I got a I question cuz Billy mm-hmm. uh, the question on the chat that I want to bring up. Billy Jean Girl 24 brought up. Did they talk about what happened to Ryan's mom? They haven't mentioned it. Yeah, they haven't mentioned it. Sort of nebulous so. yeah. at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I and I always wonder when we ever, whenever there's a character mystery, especially a parent on mm-hmm. this show, mm-hmm. is there going to be some timey wimey shit that messed with them? Or we go like with Rose Maybe. and like, what are we going to find out here? Mm-hmm. Uh, are we going to travel back? I always felt like we were going to get more with Clara's parents. That they like they built this thing and it always felt like it was going to be some. Crazy conspiracy, mm-hmm. and it was pretty just cute and minor. But yeah. uh, maybe we're gonna get that here with Brian. Maybe we get some timey wimey stuff that's just nuts. I'm here for it. 
Uh, uh, plus, someone in the chat said, I'm with Dave on yeah, Ryan and Yaz <laughs> being together, because not a bad play, play, I'm not bad against thing. it. I just would prefer it didn't happen. But I'm not against it either. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, it's you also nice to see two brown people who are also not of the same race in a relationship, because you don't see that often either, where it's right. like... Um, and it doesn't feel like that weird Martha Mickey situation, <laughs> where it's a little like yeah, the two also, black people. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, you're still talking about interracial dating, and you're talking about it from yeah. a point of view that we don't often see. So I, I appreciate that as well. I just don't want any romance. Well, with, yeah. with only a I few minutes left, um, I want to ask you guys if, if there were any other standout moments from this episode that you really mm-hmm. liked. Like we talked about the monster and the Jack Robertson plotline a little bit. Um, the like the mom, uh, yeah, Yaz's mom. Uh, my name is Nasia. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yaz's mom. There's, I liked that little yeah. repetition of she the just joke. Keeps it. Um, um, but anything else that like stood out to you guys? I like Yaz's dad. I like that we Hakeem. got to see. Yeah, mm-hmm. I really like that we got to see that. He was just such a good natured, like father figure. Mm-hmm. It was really nice to see, and that he, you know, is cleaning around the house mm-hmm. and trying to cook. Well, try, trying to cook. Supposedly, he's not good at that one I mean, particular thing. It looks like an awesome meal. <laughs> it looks good to like, me oh, too. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed. Yeah, that. the the whole family was introduced in a very short amount of time, but fully fleshed out characters, yeah. even in that short amount of time. I also love that the doctor loves that she says, "Dude." Yeah, mm-hmm. that's. I'm a yes. big fan of her saying "dude," mm-hmm. and I love that she loves that. Yes, yeah. I'm uh, with you because I say "dude" a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> I say "dude" now. <laughs> this is such a good moment. Um, I did it. Like we talked, we talked about the Jack Robinson character, but I thought he had some great like lines that oh, really yeah. like set up. It is that like continued of like any time we deal with Americans on this show. And I know we did Rosa last week, but it always feels like, man. If you just saw Doctor Who and was like, got your idea of what Americans are, and maybe this is fair re- these days. In like, as I as I say this, um, I liked the uh, I did like I don't I don't need your approval, Doctor. This is what the world needs right now, and it felt very like, yep, oh, that's yeah. Americans. Well, they're bouncing the Rosa with last week with the Trump of this week, yeah. so it's a good yeah. it's a good yeah. like dichotomy. Of yeah, the two. exactly. That's and true. so uh, before we wrap out, we've got to do our segment. <laughs> Who on who? Yeah. Artist sound. Right? Uh, so, Adrian. I'll be super quick. Uh, okay, so there were a few uh, special guests on this episode of Doctor Who. Sorry, I'm adjusting my chair. Uh, we had Shabna Gulati, who played Nadia, the mom. Uh, she's actually known as a series regular on Coronation Street uh, as Sunita Whoa. Alahan. That's a yeah. stunning picture of yeah. her. Yeah, she's wow. gorgeous. Boom. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to do you right, girl. This picture. Uh, then we also had, of course, Mr. Big, Chris Noth, or Noth. I'm pretty sure it's Noth. Uh, he's done Sex in the City and The Good Wife, but you mainly know him from Sex in the City. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's also a delight in real life because he definitely speaks to the fact that he plays characters that are not that nice. Right. Uh, and he's very much aware of it. Uh, and, you know, just Google his interviews. He's really great. Then we also had the director who was, there is a, Chris Chibnall is doing a push to actually have uh, diversity behind the scenes with his directors. Awesome. This is the second female director. Uh, last week was also directed Great. by a black woman, the first black woman to ever direct an episode of Dr. Really? Hill. Yes. And so Sally, I'm going to mess up your name, I'm sorry. Abra, <laughs> Abrahamian uh, was the director. She's known for being a writer on EastEnders and director of The Worst Witch and Wolf Blood. And then I really wanted to call out the sound effects. The uh, Worst Witch? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to call out uh, the sound effects slash Foley uh, creator for this episode, Harry Barnes. I just thought it was really wonderfully done sound mixing and sound editing. And so he did Children of Men, Hellboy 2, King- oh, Kingdom of Heaven, ooh. and Sweeney Todd. Ooh. So he definitely had that thriller, horror yeah. background. Yeah, that makes the great, sense. Like, yeah. the, 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 the spider noises yeah. as they're yeah. crawling, like, especially yeah, like that, that one scene where they're on the ceiling yeah. and we get mm-hmm. that reveal. That makes your skin crawl a little bit. And then lastly, I just want to call out a few references to the Tenant Years. Season 3, Episode 1, Ragnos and the Runaway Bride was Mm -hmm. when we also encountered a very large spider, but alien. Uh, Also later referred to in Turn Left with the Trickster with the spider on the back. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that crap was gross. Still gross. Ten years later. Uh, And then the Season 4, Episode 7 episode of The Unicorn and the Wasp with the best perform. (laughs) That's also another time where the Doctor used uh, a natural element, pepper, uh, to attack the animal or deter the 
animal or way whatever. Way too many giant bugs on this Can show. we take a moment to also look at that picture and realize how much the special effects have improved. So much better. Yeah. In that time. That's so a, much better. Yeah. That yeah, looks like it was done in like Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. And, and that bee is not that bad. It's especially you can see it <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. I just think it's much better now with the, all the spiders of this episode were pretty good. Well, yeah, they were. Like, oh, yeah. A bigger budget for sure as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but mainly that the doctor used the essential oils or peppermint tea tree oil for the spiders as well. So. Oh. Natural, I'm an herbalist, natural <laughs> bug deterrent so you don't have to kill them. Yeah. And that's it. Well, thank Very you, nice. Adrian, for that who's who on who. Like, um, and thank you, audience, <laughs> for joining us on today's Doctor Who After Show. Should I just call them Team TARDIS? Yeah. yeah. Or is that going to be confusing because there's... Prediction? The team- um, unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, okay. Um, but next week, we're going to ho- Space Hospital. Space yeah, Hospital. Space, space hospital. hospital. Those Call are always out. safe. I, I mean, like you, look, we've done all the <laughs> standard Doctor Who episodes. Go back in time, go to another planet, base under siege. Gotta get that Space, space Hospital. Space Hospital. Gotta get a good Space Hospital. Give me them cat nurses. Um, it, is, it is a very classic Doctor Who trope. Yep. Okay? Like, for better or worse, like, Doctor, like Space Hospital. Space Hospital. Uh, but, uh, Dave. Where can everyone find you if they want to find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me at DaveChild.com or MRDaveChild on the Twitter and the Instagrams, because my name is Dave Child. <laughs> Zia. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Zia underscore land. It's XIA underscore land. And immediately after this, I'll be doing Marvel TV Weekly. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at Miss Adrian Snow. Uh, I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. Also, be sure to check out the Daredevil After Show that I do with Zia, uh, as well as Christian Blatt and Jesse Klein. Um, stay tuned for more announcements. That I also have a podcast, pa- pa- podcast called Chips in the Night, where we take weird fictional couples like Elsa and Jon Snow and decide how that relationship would work out. Chips in the Night on all of the platforms, <laughs> guys. This has been the Doctor Who After Show. Mm-hmm. Thanks for geeking out with us. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.